Welcome to Need to Know. I'm Jim Halsell for the U.S. Naval Institute, and today we're diving deep into the fundamentals of sonar. So whether you're in one of the sea services or just interested in the science of acoustic propagation in the ocean environment, this episode is for you. We're calling it Sonar 101. Sonar, which stands for Sound, Navigation, and Ranging, is essential for submarines, surface ships, and anti-submarine aircraft. Using sound waves, sonar helps detect and identify objects underwater, providing situational awareness and enabling engagement of targets anywhere in the water column. There are two main types of sonar, active and passive. Let's break each one down. First, active sonar. Imagine this as underwater equivalent of radar. A transducer sends out sound energy, those famous pings you've heard about. When these sound waves hit an object, they bounce back as echoes, which are picked up by receivers. This method provides precise ranging and bearing information, great for identifying the exact location of other vessels. But there's a trade-off. Active sonar is loud. Sending out those pings reveals the location of the transmitting unit, making it detectable from up to twice its effective range. So while it can pinpoint a target, it can also give away its own position. Despite what the movies show, active sonar isn't what submarines usually rely on. Pinging loudly is like shouting. It's a surefire way to get detected. Then there's passive sonar, which operates very differently. Instead of sending out sound waves, it uses hydrophones to listen for sounds in the water, like the hum of machinery or the distinctive churn of propellers. It doesn't emit any sound itself, making it a stealthier choice, ideal for covert operations. The drawback? Passive sonar can't determine exact range on its own. It only gives bearing. To get range, operators rely on techniques called target motion analysis, or TMA. Now, you might be wondering, how does sound actually travel underwater? That brings us to acoustic propagation, the way sound moves through the ocean environment. It's affected by factors like water temperature, salinity, and pressure. Lower frequency sound, below one kilohertz, travels far with little absorption, which is great for long-range passive detection. High frequency sound, on the other hand, doesn't travel as far, but can provide detailed information, making it valuable for close-range active sonar imaging. Sound also travels differently based on its interaction with the ocean's layers, the surface, and the bottom. There are three primary propagation paths we'll discuss. First, direct path propagation. This is where sound travels straight from the source to the receiver. This is the simplest path and occurs at shorter ranges. Next, bottom bounce. Bottom bounce is where sound waves reflect off the ocean floor before reaching the receiver. Here, the composition of the seabed, whether rocky, sandy, or muddy, can impact detection quality and range. And then there's the sound channel. Think of this as a unique ocean layer where sound travels vast distances with minimal energy loss. This channel is created by a mix of temperature and pressure that forms a natural duct, allowing sound to propagate horizontally. Sounds within this channel can be detected hundreds of miles away. Another important concept is what submariners call operating beneath the layer. The ocean has what's called a thermocline, a sudden change in temperature with depth. Sound waves tend to stay on one side or the other of this layer, so submarines can hide by diving beneath it, using it as a kind of natural shield but overall, the ocean is not exactly a quiet place. Natural sounds like sea life, storms, and even underwater volcanic activity can add to what's called the ambient noise level. Higher ambient noise makes it harder to pick out specific sounds, so sonar operators have to account for this LE, or noise level, when detecting targets. Last, let's talk about an interesting type of sound channel phenomenon called a convergence zone. Here, sound waves bend back toward the surface in specific patterns creating areas where sounds converge near the surface. This effect can extend detection ranges to hundreds of miles, making it useful for tracking distant contacts. So, to sum it up, sonar is complex. It blends science, technology, and a deep understanding of the ocean environment. It's as much about what we can detect as it is about what we reveal, and our understanding of sonar is always enhancing, so our capability to operate in the ever-challenging undersea domain is always improving. That's all for today's episode. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into sonar. For more articles and insights, visit us at usni.org.